Hey, Weather Geeks, it is Weather for Weather Geeks here, the Tuesday evening edition here on September the 8th. Uh, the opening eight days of September have really been something, haven't they? It's been, of course, remarkably hot for this time of the year and consistently hot. You know, this has been the trademark of the last couple of summers that uh, we've had some hot days here and there, but sustained periods of hot weather, really hard to come by until the past uh, seven, eight, nine days. When we take a look, uh, look back at the uh, record books here, now today's data is not included in this, but I can tell you if you throw in today's numbers, today's high was 90, this will be the hottest opening eight days of September on record here in Youngstown, beating out 1943 and uh, 1985 pretty easily. Uh, so uh, that's factoring in, you know, you look at the average temperature, that factors in the highs and the lows. When you just look at the highs, uh, also in first place pretty easily. And again, we're missing today's data. Factor in the 90 today and the average high from the 1st to the 8th is, is going to end up being about 88. Good for the warmest uh, first eight days just in terms of high temperatures on record here in Youngstown. Beating out 1943, 1933, 1945. Look at you know how long it's been since we've had a stretch like this of, of hot high temperatures in early September. You know, we're talking about the 1930s and 40s here. The most recent year, other than in the 30s or 40s, 1961, uh, then 1983 shows up here, 1985, 2007. But certainly in the top five, six, seven here, uh, you have to go back 60, 70, 80 years. So pretty impressive stuff. All right, we have changes on the way. After a high of 90 today, this cold front is going to put an end to the heat wave. Uh, It'll take its time, though. I think tomorrow is still a warm and humid day. We'll still get into the mid-80s tomorrow, if not uh, you know, lower 80s. But if we get a few peaks of sun, I think mid-80s are attainable. But uh, this is the cold front that is heading our way. Now, uh, not seeing a lot of thunder yet, uh, or I should say at this current time uh, with the front. Earlier on, we did have some pretty big storms up in Michigan. But uh, just some, uh, you know, pretty garden variety showers here now from Michigan through Indiana and into Illinois as well. And the air behind this front, a lot different uh, as high pressure builds into the Midwest. Show you the temperatures. Now, it's not exactly autumnal, but, you know, high temperatures uh, were mostly in the mid 70s today in the Midwest. So pretty easy to pick out our cold front this evening. It is right through here, of course. So uh, we're looking at big changes. Uh, and again, it's going to be kind of a two-step process. Tomorrow is still humid, but not as hot, and then the humidity will come down as we go into the day on Thursday. And uh, look at the cool air up in Canada. That's this next front lingering up here, and that'll head our way Friday night. Um, and that's what will bring down some more legitimately cool air in time for the uh, for the upcoming weekend. Well, what about rain tomorrow? Uh, I, you know, I don't think this is going to be much tomorrow. Been less and less impressed with what the models are showing for tomorrow. So here's your, uh, you know, get, get up in the morning outlook here. Simulated radar at about 8 a.m. Probably dry at this point. And then as we go towards lunchtime uh, tomorrow, here's 11 a.m. You know, still not looking at much, but there could be a shower. And then in the afternoon, you know, there might be a thunderstorm here and there. Here's the the NAM model at 4 p.m. Showing a couple of heavier clusters, but boy, this is real scattered stuff. This isn't exactly a wall of water coming through. So. You know, we're going to allow for that shower, maybe an afternoon thunderstorm, but there'll be plenty of dry time as well for tomorrow. It will be a cloudier day, and again, the humidity stays up. Now, by Thursday morning, here's 8 a.m., the front is still just crawling through, uh, and there could be maybe a spritz or a shower in the morning on Thursday, but the drier air is going to make inroads as we get into the afternoon, and uh, that means good things for us. We can open up the windows Thursday night under a partly cloudy sky. It'll be back down in the 50s. Doesn't that sound good? Uh, as far as the upcoming weekend, uh, we, we do have some changes to the forecast here because the models are definitely trending towards a cooler and wetter idea here. Let's uh, fast forward to Saturday, Saturday morning here. Uh, what we have going on is uh, you see a little bit of green around, and it's hard to tell really what's going on just by looking at the surface chart here. But you look upstairs in the atmosphere. Let's take a look up at uh, 500 millibars or 18,000 feet uh, right here. And what we have going on into the weekend is a pretty nice trough digging into the Great Lakes. This is the trough that'll swing through and reinforce the cool weather as we head into Saturday. So uh, Saturday, again, is not a day that I think is a washout, but I could see where there's a shower at just about any point on Saturday. Why issue home opener, excuse me, a Saturday. A lot of people might want to get outdoors, do something uh, in, the, uh, in the afternoon on Saturday and, you know... Eh. Shower here and there, it might not be much better than 70, might even stay in the 60s Saturday. And Sunday is the day that we've had to make an even bigger change. We were advertising Sunday to be a pretty decent day before, but 
Now this thing looks like it's going to linger, and so we're going to have to allow for a shower on Sunday as well. Here's uh, another look at the 500 millibar chart right here, showing uh, that trough is, is kind of evolving into more of a closed-off low-pressure system. So, you know, it was kind of an open trough before, but now there's a closed contour right here, meaning there's an upper-level low. And upper-level low is the weatherman's woe, as the saying says, uh, as the saying goes, I should say. Uh, and these are notoriously fickle, and the models have a hard time with them, but a lot of the models are picking up on this idea for the second half of the weekend, meaning that the weekend is looking pretty damp and cool for mid-September. I don't want to say chilly, but kind of cool. You know, no higher than about 70 over the weekend. Well, what about the longer range? The cool down is not going to last all that long. Here's a look at the temperature anomalies. Uh, Saturday, you can see that cool pocket sliding through. It's still around on Sunday. But then once we're done with the weekend, watch that cool pocket shrivel and the warmer than average temperatures return for the middle of next week. So uh, the middle of next week will be a lot warmer, I think, than the weekend. We could touch 80 a few times next week. Then beyond that, the climate model here uh, for the 18th through the 28th, so day 10 through 20, does advertise kind of a cool period. Not sure if this has the right idea yet. There's a lot of model shenanigans in the longer range, uh, but this is one idea. And if this were to be true, uh, the 10 days... Uh, the 10-day stretch here from uh, the 18th through the 28th would be cooler than average. Now, September is certainly going to, going to, get, going to uh, go down in the record books as a hotter than average month here. It's going to be hard to overcome the hot start, but uh, even if the, but, uh, the month may still finish on a cool note if this has the right idea. That remains to be seen. All right, that is the Tuesday Night Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching, everyone. Look forward to seeing you tonight on 21 News at 11. More geeky stuff tomorrow evening here on ericwfmj.com and wfmj.com slash weather. Have a great night.